Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, we'll wait a few minutes. I got to see if we're live anywhere here. And then we'll continue on. How's that? I don't want it too much that way. I should have the phone in here, but that's okay. Three phones. Come on, the bee lady. Here we go. Okay. Um, here we go. Okay. I hope I have checked and done. Oh, where's chat? Chat. Okay. Yes, we have somebody. Okay, hello. Hi there. Oh, thank you. Okay, we're going to start in a minute, okay? Um, Okay, I'm going to start. It doesn't matter who's here, who isn't here, because there's so many channels that are um, live. You know, I don't have to tell anybody. Everybody's live, and that's fine. I think everybody should be live doing whatever it is. Hi, Brenda. Everybody should be live doing whatever it is they need to do, okay? Um i going backwards on this. I just want to see the chat. Okay. So our present, we're going to go through with our presentation. Um, and then we're going to wait a little bit. Well, if you have any questions about our, these that didn't quite make it, we will go to that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pull up the presentation. Hi. And then um, we'll see. Are you guys a couple? We are a couple. We have been married over 30 years. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, screen share, and we only <laughs> want this, and we only want, let's hope that's it. Okay. I can't see up there. Oh, here we go. There. Okay, as soon as this comes up, we'll start, okay? Hi, Rusty Faith. Okay. Um. Grizz, hey buddy. Okay, um, so this is kind of an important one. And um, I hope there's somebody in here that is experienced with top hive, top hives, top bar hives. Top bar. What, mm -hmm. Yeah, when I get to that, I'm like, okay. Okay, ready? Here we go. Hi, Gopher Green. Okay, here we go. This is next in a series. Remember, at the end of the series, or even during it, you want something, you want one of these, let me know. I will email them out. The only thing is I'm not going to um, put them in the U.S. mail. And then I'm going to make up a document of all of them so when you come back, you will have something to look at. What equipment? Oh, here we go. What equipment? I did this too. What equipment? I'm standing up. Whoa, let me go back here. Oh, folks, do. And I use spell check. You need to be a beekeeper. In the past few weeks, we have discussed various aspects of beekeeping. By now, you have decided what type of bees. I'm here. Oh, no, wrong mouse. I'm here, okay? You are going to raise. If you are going to begin with a nuke, packaged bees, or catch a swarm. Remember, only recommended for experienced beekeepers. By the way, Bee Man's going to be looking at questions. Hi, Fat Boy, welcome. Um, and if um, please put the, your questions in all caps so he can distinguish them, you know, from just you all chatting. Have a good time. Hi, Albany. Okay, so you've made your, your decisions. Where your bee yard is going to be, we discussed that last week, either on your property or someplace else. How many hives you are going to begin with and what foundation you will set them on. 
Now it is time to assemble all of the equipment you will need to be a successful beekeeper. And hi, Mach 1. Good to see you. Um, I'm not treating you as juveniles by doing this, but remember, I'm a teacher. And once a teacher, always a teacher. And I love to teach. Okay. And also, like I said, my reading through, you will hear it. And um, because, you know, I encourage chatting. I think it's great. And um, you can type back answers there, okay, dear? Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. Yeah. What you have to have. Number one. Yes, okay. I see. I see everyone. I'm just reading, okay, on another screen. Kelly, hi. Good to see you, girl. Okay. Um, your bees will be living in whatever type of beehive you choose. There are two choices, which are the traditional Langstroth hives or top bar hives. Langstroth hives are the hives you are probably the most accustomed to seeing when reading books or watching television shows about beekeeping. These consist of a deep hive box with 10 frames, a top, an inside board, bottom board, and entrance excluder. Um, a note on that bottom board, uh, you may want a screen bottom board for ventilation, correct? Yes. All right, so you're going to want a screen bottom board. Okay, so let's go down. This is a Langstroth hive. I'm sure you've all seen them, okay? You've seen them in our video. You see them in anybody else's video. Uh, if you go to um, Jerome Beekeeping, you see them there, okay? There's your hive box, and it comes with, I have to get my pointer out. It comes with um, your top, which is some type of metal. When you open this up, there's going to be a top box there, okay? over your frames. Here is your deep. Deep meaning it's kind of tall. I don't have the actual dimensions. Um, down here is your entrance reducer. You see in this case it's large. This controls how many bees you let in and out. Okay. Uh, times when you are Times when you are um, treating your hive for mites and things, you this one becomes small, but we'll get more into that later. I don't want to go ahead. This comes with it, and then your bottom board. Most bottom boards are wooden. We suggest, well, we don't recommend. We just suggest, hi, Pickerick, good to see you. Um, we suggest that you go with a screen bottom board for ventilation, okay? These are your frames right here are 10 frames that go in this hive. Now, folks, um, we have beekeepers in here. Kelly knows Pickerick is a bee expert. Okay, go to those channels, subscribe, and um, anybody else in here? Good game, Bees and Homestead. Okay, him, anybody in here that has bees or anything, right now say, we have bees. Do I have, am I subscribed to you, good home? I'm doing that right now if I'm not. Remember what I said, no such thing. I am subscribed to him as a know-it-all beekeeper. Okay. Now, what I was going to say about these are there are two, two types of foundations, if I'm not mistaken, plastic and wax. Uh, there is no foundation. No foundation. Just a top bar. Okay, just, just an empty screen, like. Take out this black part. Okay. Just, just a bar. Right. And then there's the plastic with wax on it. Um, and then there's just, there's one with just wires. I saw that with the wires. Yeah. Okay. What are the advantages of just the frames, Beeman? Just with nothing in here. Um, you can uh, extract the entire comb intact with the okay. honey in it. You can get the comb with the honey. Okay. Now. Um, which would give you sort of a kind of a sort of top bar hive kind of situation. Okay. All right. Now going to, uh, good game bees in homestead. Please let us know. Are you in the North South? I just checked and I am subscribed. We are subscribed to you. Um, something else about these frames when you put them in, remember what we discussed in a previous lesson. 
a tremendous amount of energy is going to go into these bees having to put make a uh, comb on here. So if you know, if you have been a beekeeper and you have some frames that already have honeycomb on them, not necessarily honey, just anything, put them in there, okay, and feed them. All righty. Okay. That's part, that's what goes in here. You're deep. Remember, you're deep. That's your base. That's at the bottom. Okay. Next. As your beehive population expands, and it is going to grow, everybody. Hi, Susan. So good to see you. You will need to add another basic deep, we call them basic boxes. Okay, deep hive box on top of it. The practice that most beekeepers use is to have two deep hive boxes as the base of their beehive and then add super hive boxes on top where their bees will continue to store honey. We will discuss in a future session what you should expect to see in your two bottom hive boxes and how to make an educated guess when it is time to add a super. Okay? Uh, can somebody or do you want to address uh, Albany Mountain? Uh, please, questions and all. I'm, I'm going with the flow here. Do, um, where can you buy any? Uh, wow, we don't know where you are. Can you tell us where you are, Albany Mountain? <coughs> all right, let us know what state. If you have a question about where you can get bees, <coughs> things like that, please tell us your state, okay? A lot of buffering. Excuse me? Wait a minute. Hmm. Let me check this uh, connection. Um, let me check the connection really quick. We're on the right one. Shouldn't be too much. I don't want to go off of that one. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Is the buffering? Let me know about the buffering because, okay, no buffering there. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to go down to the super highs. Here we go. Remember. Most beekeepers, all righty, two deeps, because those frames are longer in, like, from top to bottom. The height is longer. I don't have the dimensions, okay? But that's giving your queen bee the most space to lay brood. And your nurse bees and your worker bees, the most space to put in honey and to put in um, pollen and whatever else. I don't know. Remember, the nurse bees are going to be using what's in your deep to feed those larvae, the brood. I'm not sure about the bee bread. My brain just took a, a hike. What about the bee bread? What is that made of? Um, bee bread is a combination of pollen and honey. Jerome Bee Farm, hi, there's Jerome Bee Farm. All of you people with those questions, not just mm -hmm. us, make sure you are, su are subscribed to Jerome Bee Farm and click on his link. And there's a guy to go to. He's doing good. He is in Oklahoma, okay? And he's rolling right along, all righty? Hi, uh, Bob. Okay, moving on. This is your super, okay? This is what the traditional beekeeper says, okay, my bees, they've got two deeps. They, you know, they're running out of space. The queen, queen, she's going all around laying and this and that and yada. So now I'm going to put on, um, no problem. There's another beekeeper in here too, Jerome, up there somewhere. Wait, let me find out because, you know, uh, also um, Southern Ark Homestead is a beekeeper. Uh, where's Good Game Bees and Homestead? Okay. And Pickerick. Pickerick is really you know he's gonna get his bees now okay this year another expert okay um just because a person doesn't have bees doesn't mean they don't know anything about them like kelly kelly p in here her next door neighbor has i don't know how many highs maybe a hundred i don't know okay and um she actually allowed him to put some of his hives in her pasture so all righty Thank you, Susan. Okay, this is your soup. This is your super. This is what most beekeepers say. Well, you know, the bees are doing good, yada, yada. So we're going to put a super on and hope that they make some honey here. And this is what we'll take. Okay. Okay, Gopher Green has six hives and he has a really unique, he caught swarms last year. Okay, so you're going to want to sub to him, send him some messages how he got them. Okay. And as far as, um, 
Albany, Best Buy. I don't know. Is that That's too me. Sunny? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Now the the infamous Queen Excluder. All right. I'll read it first. <laughs> this is what it looks like. This small piece of equipment truly has become controversial among beekeepers. Some say it is wonderful. Some never use it. This is a metal screen placed on top of the second deep hive box. Okay, you've got your two hot, two deeps for the purpose of preventing your queen bee from being able to go into your super hive boxes. Remember your little super above and um, you don't want her up there laying brood, okay? Remember, the queen is bigger than any others, bigger than drones, bigger than workers, so she's not gonna be able to get through. But the worker bees can get through and they're gonna go up into your super, make comb and make honey. All right, we don't want her up there potentially laying brood with your eggs in the part of the beehive. In this, in that part, in the part of the beehive, whatever. That pe beekeepers take off for the honey they were used. Now, those of you that saw my stream from August or whatever, hi, uh, Farmer Chick. Good, good to see you. That Farmer Chick right there, she has 140 cow she's a dairy farmer up in canada okay anybody that's a dairy farmer is my kind of girl i love cows hubby won't let me get a cow i'm working on them <laughs> anyway now i personal yes some people uh some beekeepers call uh call the queen excluders disparagingly bee excluders <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's why there's there's real differences opinions on it, and I see Pickerick, you don't use them. Mm -hmm. We did an experiment. Hi, Mister Ray. We did an experiment last year. We put some on half and some on the other half, and I don't know. Some of you said I was imagining things. We opened up those hives, and and it was so hot back there. Um, the bees were fried on there. Now, nobody believes me. You can go back to those streams, and, I, and I'll put the pictures up. You don't have to go back there. We'll go over all that stuff um, next one week when we, we show you all the things we've done. We also left it on too long. We were using it to manipulate the hive, and I left it on too long. So. Well, 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 it shouldn't fry them. Uh, well, no, I left it on too long. And what happened is a lot of the dead ones on top of it were drones. They were too big. They couldn't get through. Well, what were the, how did they get up there? They hatched up there, I think. Well, how did how did they hatch up there if they couldn't get if the queen didn't? didn't I get think there were. Uh, good point. I don't know. Aha! Uh -huh. I don't know, folks. They fried. <laughs> okay, I think they fried. Okay, now are you you all? Well, you don't have to keep track because you just email me. Now you're gonna need some feeders. Here we go. Gotta feed your bees. Okay, <laughs> feeders for your bees. Front high feeder, often called an entrance feeder. This is the most inexpensive feeder, okay? These are a mason jar filled with sugar water and whatever else you want to put in there to feed your bees. Screw it onto the actual feeder. These sit at the entrance of our hive. Okay, sit this part here, not the jar. This little part here is all, and my mouse isn't going there yet. I have got to get that pointer up. It's all you're doing. You're going to Put it on there, turn it upside down, and this little part here goes next to your entrance or in your entrance. In. In your goes, entrance. That goes. Ugh, if you put an hive. empty. Okay, all right. Uh, we used these the first year because we were on, you know, we were budgeting. And so we used them. And I, I don't know, we thought they worked pretty good. It is said that they may mm. encourage robbing. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think they did for us some. I think okay, we think robbing. that, yeah, but we've got so many critters back there. We don't know what's robbing what. But if, you know, mason jars are inexpensive, any kind of jar that will screw on top of there. And you're just getting the bottom part here, which is, I don't know, maybe six bucks of that, okay? All right. What we are currently using is a top high feeder. And these hold, I put one gallon. How many gallons fit in there? Um... I think it holds five. Oh, well. Well, it may hold at least a gallon of food and have a screen so the bees will not drown. So you're pouring it in these two spaces where you don't see uh, the screen part. And so the bees crawl up there and eat the water and then they, um, so they don't drown. Now, these are easy to put in. 
because you just take your top off and they sit on top of your your top box. Top box. Is. Okay. Those are bad for oh, okay. Now, oh, they're doing a okay. Now, let me stop here. There are all kinds of ways to feed your bees. I've seen some people with two liter uh soda containers somehow jury rigged up to something. I've seen some people that have a container set a little bit away for reasons. These are not the only ways. These are the two traditional ways um, for you all that um, are just starting, okay? Just starting out, you're on a budget. We're every, every beekeeper starting out is on a budget. We were, maybe you're not, I don't know. These, these uh, entrance feeders, good to go, okay? I would personally, if I had, if I had to make a choice, I would get the, well, the, the, these other ones aren't too expensive, but I would get the entrance ones and throw a little bee food in there. Yes, question? Good game bees and Homestead uses a frame feeder. I saw those. Which is, yeah, and I saw some those. other people here do too. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. I saw those. Okay, just keep putting up info. Okay, so you're now you're gonna get your feeders. Okay, now we're at the top of our hive. Anybody that has used these, chime in. Because I'm going to tell you, I had to go research these. We have not used them. Um, the going consensus is if you're going to um, be going into beekeeping big time, you don't want to use these, okay? Don't ask me why. I'm not sure about that, though. You know, but that's what they say. I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. Whatever. Whoops. Let me get that out of there. Okay. That's what this part looks like. And I guess they just sit there. Now, there are some others that are up on stands. I think uh, Grandpa's Place has one that's up on a stand. Okay. Now, they have frames. And on top, here is what their frame looks like. Okay, but I'm gonna scroll down. These are the frames. I'm gonna scroll down and show you your finished product once the bees are finished laying. As you can see, they're empty and the bees make comb. See that beautiful comb? They have to build comb down and then put the honey in. Advantage being, if you like honeycomb, you know, you like, you know, some people like, you know, you, you see people have honey sold in combs or whatever. This might be the go with one or two hives, maybe. Um, another idea is that um, you may want to use a traditional hive like the Langstra, and then you may want to just leave one frame empty. So you're gonna get the same thing over there, or am I mistaken? You're gonna have um, one over there. That's going to be empty with just comb. Okay. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's up to you what you want to do. Some people just love these. My question is, how do you winter these bees? Okay. I don't know how you winter them. Anybody in the chat, Mark, watch them. Anybody that has done these, anybody that has experience with these right now, you know, any comments because we have not done them. We don't have any experience with them. Um, offering them um, as an option. Okay. Um, anybody ever use these? Anybody, dear? Uh, I'm looking a friend of somebody's. Of, okay. Of my, um, I of... don't know if people in the north use them. I don't know if people in the south use them. I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So going on, that's what they look like. I mean, it does look nice. I mean, just imagine you go in, how would you extract? You have to go in and get the bees off and just take the whole thing. Then the bees have to build another comb all over. To me, you, you would have to be in a pollen uh, nectar rich area because it's going to take a lot of pollen and nectar and bee food for them to be able to build that much comb. If you're taking, you're taking the comb out. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because when we take, I'm not pushing anything. 
But when I uh, when we take ours out, we only uncap them with that one little tube. We don't, you know, use that hot knife or anything. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Comment here. No, 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 no comment. No. Okay. Oh, go ahead. No. I oh, let me say. Okay. I just don't know about that. But we might. We might. Okay. Hi, two. Here you go. This is the standard. Okay. Standard, folks. Standard, standard. There are all, let me see if I go down to explain. Okay. And these are, if you watch any of the beekeepers in here working with their hives, this part here, the rounded hook at the bottom, that's to lift up your hives. They fit in the Langstrom. Lift up frames. Lift up frames. Ugh. Perfectly. They fit in there perfectly. Um, this part, and, and also separated. This part up here is sharp, okay? It will, uh, I use this part up here to go in between, like when the little bees have glued everything together, you know, to get the boxes separated. It's just, this is something you've got to have. Now, going down here, uh, as we have discussed, bees glue everything together in their hive with propolis. Remember we said that's very valuable. And remember we discussed what type of bees make mostly propolis, okay? So if that's your goal, to make valuable propolis, go for those types of bees. And we have discussed, bees glue everything together in their hives with propolis. You will need a hive tool to pry open the sealed hive boxes. Remove comb from the sides of the hive, cutting and scraping off propolis and lifting each frame for inspection. This is the basic style hive tool. There are there are now many different types on the market. You may want to begin with this with, with one like this and experiment with others until you find what works best for you. Now you're working with the bees. This pries them open, and you know, they're gonna build comb everywhere. You're gonna have comb on the bottom of your box, you're gonna have comb on your feeder. You know, you take your feeder off for something, there's gonna be comb on the bottom of there. Hi, Cher, good to see you. There's gonna be comb everywhere, okay? So this scrapes it off. When we scrape off our comb, we put it on the side of the hives for the bees, okay? Um, because we don't want them to expend that energy to um, have to uh, rebuild it. What they don't take after a day or so, we take, okay? Um, okay, so you know you need that little, that little doodad, okay? Smoker, my favorite too. Okay, here's the basic smoker. Beekeepers burn twine, non-chemically treated. So don't go down to your corner store and get twine. You'll be putting chemicals on your bees, okay? There's also other things you can use. There are other things too. I'm sure people here have all kinds of ideas what to burn in there. Pine, and pine needles. Pine needles. We have not tried pine needles. Um, I actually got the little pellets because you know and the little pellets fit right up here on the tip you know if i want a whole bunch of smoke for a pesky hive i just drop those pellets down there and poof okay pine needles okay i assume they're dry okay um this part here that looks like like this part here in the back not where the steel is this part here in the back you push in and out you know puff 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 and that feeds, bellows bellows yes it pushes oxygen um, gee, go, Daniel uses pine needles too. I wonder why. Cotton mm. pine needles. Okay. Um, there, there are, there's a, uh, like a fence around it for a good reason. It gets hot. It gets very hot, folks. And there are some hooks on there to hang it. We carry a steel bucket around with us to keep it going. Okay. Mm. All right. Pine needles are free. Uh, yeah, yeah there you go. Okay. Yeah. Now, here we go. Because bees are usually not happy, we discussed this, when you begin opening up their home, they often become aggressive. Smoke makes your honeybees calmer because they believe there is a fire nearby. This causes them to eat as much honey as they can in case they need to swarm away from the danger. Because their tummies are full, it is harder for them to get in a stinging position because you know they have to lift their little tummies that's where the stinger is okay in addition the smoke will cover up the pheromone given off by your hives guard bees 
telling them that there is an intruder. You know, as soon as you go down there, the garpies go, intruder alert, intruder alert, okay? And starts giving off that pheromone. No, no, that's why usually you'll see beekeepers smoke inside the entrance. That's where the guards are. You wanna mask that odor, okay? Because a honeybee's al alarm pheromone smells like bananas, if you smell this, smoke them more. Also, do not eat bananas before going to work in your bee yard, okay? I'm going to I'm going to try a little mask so um I'm not um I don't know if I have that out here. Do I have that in here or did I just tell you uh oh okay. Uh I don't know if it's up here or not but no, I think it's below I put it. So we'll wait. Okay. All right, here we go. Be seat of boop be seat. Ah, boop be suit of your choice and veil. Due to the practice of beekeeping growing in our country, bee suits and veils now come in many different types. Because your bees tend to attack the face of intruders, the veil is the most important part. This is what I want you to know. This veil should attach somehow to your bee suit. Usually they'll have a zipper going around. Or it should be able to be tucked securely inside where it will not come out while you are in your bee yard. Okay, because they're going to go for your face. Bees have receptors on their antenna that pick up CO2. So our breaths out are a beacon to where we are. Okay, there you go. So when we are nervous or excited, et cetera, we tend to breathe more heavily. <gasps> Whatever. <coughs> Therefore, our bees will sense this anxiety from the excessive amount of CO2 we are breathing out. Hence the saying, stay calm. <clears throat> We have all seen experienced beekeepers working <clears throat> with bees without suits, veils, or gloves. They just go out there. You may want to ignore their ability for a while, especially when you are beginning. Okay? <clears throat> you don't need a full suit. Okay, Jerome, I'll see how that works out for you. Are you on there? <laughs> no, he's, he says use a ventilated suit. Yes. Uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. <clears throat> all right. Going down. Okay, bee suits. Now, there are bee suits are all the rage for beekeepers, you all. Okay. I'm telling you, especially ladies. Oh, it's it's become so cosmopolitan now. They have bee suits with little flowers. And I saw one relatively dark, almost like a um uh what would I call it? Cameo of some type. And keeping in mind that bees don't like dark colors. I don't know what they're thinking. Okay. Um, so this is the one piece. This, this is the biggest picture I could get of this. Okay. Where am I here? Here I am. Sorry. This is a one piece. This is the traditional beekeeping suit with the traditional veil. This is what we started with. It's a one, it looks like a jumpsuit for lack of a better way of saying it, okay? Uh, most beekeepers on a budget uh, start with this. We were the beekeepers on a budget, okay? Even if you're not, you know, you, you, you may change, you know? <laughs> Jerome is saying, wear a suit. Wear a and, suit. Uh, Helga, Helga's Pennsylvania cooking <laughs> is saying that somebody doesn't uh, so yeah a lot of beekeepers are out there oh you see them out there and they don't have anything on whoopee okay she has a friend that doesn't open. Okay. okay now once you get past this one and you know get your suits large like my suit is hanging off me and believe me that's i think it's like size xxx5 or something you don't want a tight b suit I'm talking to the ladies especially. Oh, it's hanging off me. You want it hanging off you because it's gonna it, it's gonna get hot. You're gonna sweat, you know. And, and don't, you know, wear something light down there. Okay, this is number two, and these little dots are in there because I did a clip. I didn't couldn't have his head. Anyway, two piece bee suit. Well, that this one up here is a number one, but here's a two piece one down here. We now use two piece bee suits. Um, Ours are ventilated, supposedly. Now, the only thing is, those ventilated bee suits, I think, are heavy. Heavier than the one piece, okay? What you're, what you're getting in ventilation, to me, I don't know what they're made of. They say they're ventilated. Um, they're heavy. 
very heavy. Um, I don't know. I may try, you know, we keep, you know, we have our, we keep all your RB suits here, you know, for company that comes by like the relatives or when they visit, you know, you want to go to the beer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go down. We'll go down. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't know about those ventilated ones because this one up here is ventilated. That ventilated material is hot. It's hot. I think because they make thicker material. Uh-huh. Because it's ventilated, um, because they're still trying to be, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, be repelled, oh. I guess. Okay, good games. What day are you doing that review? Uh, they are heavy but cooler. I would like to find one that a half suit. Picker it goes yeah, up. Just the top. Just the yeah, I'm thinking of switching to that this year. Oh, yeah. Well, let me know when you go, cause I'll be far away from you, dear. Okay. <laughs> I know what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm, it's me. Right. All right. Gloves. Here we go. Here's what kind of gloves I have. Now, my husband goes back and forth and he'll get into that, what he's using. It may take you some time to find just the perfect pair of gloves that work for you. The picture is the typical glove used uh, because, as you see, it goes up your arm. Very similar to the gloves that you use. Actually, you probably could use these if you wanted to um, when you're clipping roses, okay? It is important to have the area between your gloves and the area where your bee suit meet, you know, around the wrist to be secure. Bee suits often have elastic wrist, wristbands for this reason. Mine also has a thing that you put your thumb in, like a little mm -hmm. thumb a hole, loop. a loop to, to keep it put pulled down, thumb. okay? Yeah. Also, as you begin working more with your beehive, you will need a pair of gloves that do not inhibit your ability to grasp. Why do I have an S, S on there? Whoops, it easy. Whoops, it easy. To grasp your frames and other objects. So, you know, you're going to have to be able to work with these gloves out there with the bees. You want everything in tip top shape. Okay? Because you're going to be moving and doing this and doing that. And I'm talking to the ladies, okay? Uh, you know, I have dropped. What did I drop, a frame or a hive or a box? Um, a frame. I dropped a frame of bees. Not pretty, folks, not pretty. Okay. Now, you want to share. My husband wears a, uses a different type of glove. What And something similar to what I used when I went to training school. What, what do you, are you using? Actually, uh, I've been using the, the leather gloves um, that look similar to that, but um, mm -hmm. so that you're not as, to make you more dexterous, I'm, uh, there I'm thinking about going to um, a light, light plastic glove. They're talking here about goatskin gloves. I've never seen those. Are they long so that, you know, my hands aren't going to be, uh, I mean, it's not, you know, it's going to cover everything. I don't know. When we went, like, when we went to class, and what were those blue gloves you were using? What were they made of? The blue ones? I, I think that was, um, I think they were nitrile. Chat? Uh, nitrile Chat. when I was the, using, um, when I was using the uh, Varroa. Oh, okay. Night. Okay. Well, he wasn't really doing the bees with them. I would like to have um, a thinner glove, but I've gotten so used to working with mine like this. Okay. That it's just what I do. All right. Here we go. Shoes. Now, you know, if you go somewhere, they're going to try to sell you bee shoes. Okay. So just. Um, Something sensible, okay? Uh, a pair of sensible shoes that gives you support, are comfortable, and a light color. These don't like dark colors. Uh, I don't know. You know, if you got a pair of shoes that you're comfortable in already, like a boot or something, because Mr. B, you wear your boots, right? You like his little um, work boots or some I, kind of boot. I yeah. wear summer walking shoes. Yeah, summer walking shoes. Yeah, which are like hiking shoes, hiking shoe boots, whatever. I'm going to get a pair of those. Not okay, boots. not boots. Okay, ladies. Needless to say, no sandals, no uh, flip flops. 
no flats. You know, you gotta you gotta cover up and socks preferably. Okay, mm. I always wear socks. Mm. Okay, now B brush. The softer the brush, the better. Bees do not like being brushed, so try not to purchase one with stiff bristles. This can be gently used to brush your bees off of a frame or other part of your hive. You know, like you take out a frame, you're going to, you've decided, okay, we're going to take this. If it's a D, I'll say, okay, they've got three or four frames of honey in there. We're going to take one off. Both sides are capped honey and put it in our freezer to put back in the hive before winter. Well, they don't want to leave. <laughs> okay. So you have to get them off of there somehow. Um, you know, so I you use the bee brush or some people say shake. I don't know. I don't think they like that. You know? Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, there's an alternative to a brush. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, uh, if they've been doing this for a while, <laughs> I've heard um, like to use feathers. If they find a big feather, like um, a feather, like from a seagull or a crow, they use a feather instead of a brush because they find it works better. Well, uh, wait a minute. How big is the feather? Big, like from a seagull or a well, crow. Well, I don't or know something. what they look like. They're big. They're as big as the brush. They're as long as as the brush part of the brush. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, no. Uh, oh yes, right, Jerome. I I do now, Jerome. If you've seen any of mine, you know, I also have my leaf leaf blower on guard, okay? And just say, oh, my, a storm is picking up. We're not too happy with it, but it, it, it gets them off. Turkey feathers? I don't know. Okay. Turkey feathers. Yeah, that's another one. I don't know how big they are. Books and magazines. Here we go, folks. You know, you can start this now. Remember, because I was waiting for B-Man to um, retire for two years, I read about bees studied about bees okay not that you have to but I, I just did um what books and or magazines you choose to read about beekeeping will be driven by what environment you are living in north or south and what type of beehive you are using langstroth i don't know if i spelled that right this time or top bar look around ask other beekeepers and use your local library to get a feel for what books are available in the beginning, a text, text means books. I mean, okay, just part of my schooling, what we call a book, text. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About beekeeping that is written for the beekeeper who is just beginning, maybe the most valuable as you begin your journey. You got an extra something in there, but what the heck. There is, there, not is also, there are also, let me take that out. There are also, no, there is also a lot of information on the internet about beekeeping, and many sites have classes. Now, folks, what is it they say? Practical guide to beekeeping. It's good. I don't know if there's a. We have the beekeeping for dummies. The dummy uh, for dummies yeah, books are really it's, good. It's okay, but a lot of people don't think they're that good for hmm? bee, the beekeeping. Yeah, a lot. Okay, of beekeepers don't like it. Jerome is recommending one. Okay. Remember the people in here that are beekeepers, sub to them. Write these people, okay? Top bars are illegal in Alabama? Huh? Good. Go for green, green living. Are you sure? Why? I wonder why. Anyway, um, if you're in the South where until this year you didn't have freezing weather, you're not going to want to run to your library and take out books on how to put my bees away for the winter. Okay. Um, yes, you're right. Good game. There are some good ones out there. There are some good ones. Um, we like to think that ours is getting that way. Um, we love our bees. We're not professional people as far as making videos yet, but our goal is to like with this, give you presentations for the beginners. We don't want anybody to be, Oh yes. The backyard. We have that one, Kelly. We do not want to anybody to be afraid. And I like to be the person working with the bees a lot because I'm trying to encourage more and more and more and more women beekeepers. When we go to our bee meetings, and yeah, there's a good amount of women there now, okay, right out there. So, but also keep in mind, like anybody says about the internet, there's good information, there's bad information. And remember what we said last week, 
if you're going to write one of these beekeepers in here or something, okay, have, remember what we said about your vocabulary, you know, get the, know your vocabulary, um, and take a picture, send them a picture, show them what your bees are doing. Okay. You can't just say, you know, call up, oh, my bees are doing this. You know, they have to, we have, they have to see visually, what are they doing before you scrape off supersede or so, seize your cells or scrape off a bee, you know, a queen's eye before you do something. What's going on with my bees? You know, okay. One thing is very clear when they don't make it. Okay. Now, also use your gut. Like I said, some of those sites out there, you know, they're doing a little of everything, but I found a lot of sites and that's my goal for the very last lesson is to be able to, is going to give you, I've been collecting sites that I think are well worth your money to go to. They don't cost. It's just well worth your time. Okay. Now, most of all, remember, okay, no one will know or understand your bees better than you. Trust your gut in all of your decisions. And even if it doesn't work out, you have learned. And that goes into your journal for the future. Remember, nothing fancy, folks. Uh, a dollar, a dollar store, whatever it is. And I don't know if I could have said that. Um, composition book. What are your hives doing? Just keep records. Well, we tried that. That didn't work. Well, we tried that. You know, we have a, a long list of things that we tried that didn't work. Remember. No two beehives will behave the same. That is one reason it is important to keep notes on which hive is doing, doing what. Keeping in mind that what works for one hive may not be a blanket solution for another. Okay, for one reason, you may have a different breed of bees over there. Okay? Give yourself time to watch and get to know your bees. And you may be surprised how much you can learn about them from their actions, such as which hives are more defensive than others, et cetera. You've heard us say, you've heard um, Mr. B say to me, okay, this is a defensive hive. Well, they're all the same to me. They're all defensive. Okay. Is everyone done with this? Because I'm going to click out of here. Yes, you can. Very good. I'm going to click out of here. And um, I'm going to hide, hide this. Okay. So we can get into some... Stop and we can go back to us. Hi. Oh, we're fun. Okay, you're gonna see us in a few minutes. Um, which I think is is fun. Oh, I gotta see who's in here. Hi, everybody. German and Italian. I never heard of German bees. Yes. No they way. They were the original ones. Okay, folks. As you saw this week. Well, first, this is my passion teaching, and like I said last week. You know, these are here for you. I've got them all stored, ready to go. And at the end, I, I'm endeavoring. Uh, Kelly's in here. She's helping me to put them on the actual video. Okay, so you'll on the actual channel. But if you want one there, so you can print it out and do whatever. Okay, write on it, whatever, and research it because we're not, you know, super duper beekeepers. Now, as you saw, a predator got one of our hives, and the other one just. That's it. Peace out. Um, we've done some um, checking. Our highs are too high. Jerome, kudos to you. Okay. Uh, but that usually before this year would work for us. We're not going to do that again. All right. Um, but in the meantime, we got to deal with what we have. Uh, going forward, I will say this, and then I'll get back into the ones that we lost. Um, I've been researching because this is how I think. I've been researching um, how to heat your hive. Now, Kelly in here said that her bee man neighbor uh, went out there with, I think, probably uh, steel barrels or whatever and just burned them through the night. Since every night up here is like zero and below, I, I don't know, that's not going to work. We have seen these, now if you have experience with this, let me know. These little, um, they're plastic coils that, like a coil, and you wrap one around each hive, and then you go to the next hive and wrap them around, okay? And there's a low current um, that keeps the hive warm. Now, because there's no way to get electricity down there, well, there is if we want to, you know, mortgage 
natural thing to get it. Um, we're thinking about solar energy would be a good idea for enough energy to do that. Maybe, but that's way on the back burner. We're going to um, go forward with the two box, one or two box winterizing, okay? Also, um, when we first started beekeeping, we have our piggy banks all over. We've been saving and saving and saving for four years, okay? And we are, the hives that you see that are, are large, the ones that make it, we're gonna split them. Uh, we have, right as of right now, we will be getting 27 more beehives. <laughs> He's not too happy about the number. But our goal, we set a goal of 50, we're on target, okay? We've been, is this our fifth year? Coming up. Coming up our fifth year, okay, folks? We gotta go for it, okay? Uh, what's everybody saying? <clears throat> Insulated wraps, okay, uh, yeah. Um, one danger about those hives that you wrap that stuff around may give them a false sense of what's going on outside. Um, they fly out, they freeze. I, I don't know. Not if it's just a wrap, no. Not if it's just a wrap, it's okay. If you artificially heat the hive, then okay. you I don't know what we're gonna do. That. We can, we have some barns. We have like four barns over there. Um, you thought of that. I thought of packing them in our little cabin. He doesn't like that idea either. <laughs> They can't get out. <laughs> okay. Um, I thought of a greenhouse. Eh, there's pricey. If, unless it's one that I've seen on uh, Rick's channel. Who's in here? Pickerick's channel. However, Pickerick, we, we think that will blow apart up here overnight. <laughs> okay. We're, I'm going to be ready. I don't know if, if, you know, but we're going with 27. Now, on the plus side, those hives had honey. So um, we're going to assess, see what's there. And um, we might have, I don't know how, how you can call it. Cause you know, some, some platforms don't allow certain things, but we might whip up some pints of, of our honey and just have a nice online. Howdy. Answer this. Oh, wow. How, how smart. Here's some honey, something like that. Um, to show that you can make lemonade out of lemons. Now, as far as the predator, ugh, it was a predator. We have tracks all over. Um, don't ask me what kind. By the time we got there, it was you know blown away. Um, some indications were, what were some of the indications? It was, oh, the bees were a lot. Don't ask me how, bee man knows how he knows. The bees were alive, which is why all the honey is there. The bees were alive when whoever, what, excuse me, whatever attempted to get them. You want to explain that? Okay, he's going to explain that. Well, I knew the bees were in there because so, I had checked. Um, so I knew they were alive. They were flying um, a couple days before. Um, it just just from seeing them before I knew the hive was alive. Um, we checked for tracks. There were no tracks because we had a windstorm the night before. Um, pretty serious windstorm. Um, and so there were no tracks of anything. Um, and so I've checked the boxes and everything. I tried to see if there were any, was any evidence of what kind of animal it was, right. but so right. far, nothing. It's whatever it was had to be pretty big. Bear? Uh, because no. Do we have bears no. here? Bear okay. would have torn the hive to pieces. Even with the stings? Yes. Okay. This now we we have a neighbor that says we have a ra a giant raccoon. Don't ask me. I don't know how high raccoons get or big raccoons get. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It was something. And, um, you know, I got into looking for scratch marks. Susan, that is a great idea. She says, put them on a flatbed and haul them into the garage. Uh, I mean, not the garage. Uh, the, the one of the barns, yeah. Anybody ever do that? Anybody? I mean, skunk? Ah, yeah. Sometimes wind. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. No, Jerome. No, 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 Jerome. It wasn't. No. 
we would have not know because it, it had a you know if you go back it had like wood behind it and even mm -hmm. if it did blow there were bricks to stop it from getting to the hive hi grandpa's place so this hive was heavy it was well over a hundred pounds yeah. Yeah. um off 16 yeah. inches off the ground and well protected from the wind. Mm -hmm. So the wind didn't do it because the hive went in two directions. I know, zigzag um, like, you know. So it was something. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, yeah. Bob Homestead, yeah, we're thinking of putting a camera out yeah. there. The one I've got doesn't work when it's below 17 degrees. So now who made that one? The 17 degree people, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so much for cameras. You got a recommendation? Probably. Yeah, we have a huge one living in our barn, uh, Jerome, according to a neighbor. Uh, everybody around here knows, you know, like what's going on in everybody's barns because they sit and watch. Like, I had never seen a turkey vulture. Mm -hmm. I saw one on that movie once. Yeah. And, there was, and then I said, that's a turkey vulture was on the road. And we called the animal people to come get it. It was a little hurt. But, ooh. Yeah, had a damaged wing. Yeah, you know, we got stuff out here. I didn't know raccoons went after, well, I guess, after bees. You know, do they? I, I didn't, I didn't know, know that, know but that. I didn't know raccoons that. Raccoons yeah. go after garbage, they'll go after anything. Well, you know, we have like the food chain here. Like, we used to see a lot of bunnies, and then all of a sudden we don't see any bunnies because then we see a lot of. Uh, oh, for deer. Yeah, coyote this, or fox or it could have something. been it, well you know? we don't have elk here um no. rain but um it could have been a deer i they don't go I after them do they they're no. somehow we we were I watching would think yeah. there would be prints even through the snow yeah. into the mud and yeah. there just weren't any you know, I was looking for hair, scratch, anything, anything. You know, um, we suspect Skunks go after bees. Yeah, Ooh, I, Jerome. Thanks, yeah, Jerome. I'm thinking of using ratchets because oh. this is the second year in a row we've lost a hive to going over. Last year it was yeah. the wind. Right. Oh. Uh, we lost one to the wind, then uh, the concrete block shifted uh -huh, on me, so uh -huh. it was a it was a worst case scenario. We had a 70 mile an hour straight line wind um, mm -hmm. in March. Um. If you didn't see the pictures on the stream, next week I'll have them here. Um, I didn't get a chance to put them on this. Um, I took some pictures um, to show, and I didn't get a chance to put them on the presentation. But, you know, we're not glorifying losing bees. We're just showing you that it happens. Okay? It happens you know everybody's like oh we're gonna go we're gonna get bees and everything's gonna be wonderful porcupine you know wow. uh, <laughs> porcupine i don't think you know skunk attack if we have porcupine we have I don't skunks think we have, i smell them i yeah we do have skunks but i don't know uh the camera is going to have to tell the tale, folks. I'm going to have to get busy oh, out there. Yeah, well, the camera can't be below 17 degrees. I, I know, but they're suggesting other cameras. Oh, oh. okay, great, great. Um, well, we left it up. I don't hoping, think we have yeah. porcupines in this specific yeah. area. We do about three hours south of here. No, I have smelled skunk, though. But like I said, we have that infamous food chain. When we don't see one animal, we see an abundance of another animal, which is a little bigger. And we did leave the hive up. I was hoping it would come back, but it didn't. I don't know. Dead a, is dead. Dead. You think it killed it? Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Now? No, we were hoping we left the hive up, and you know we thought the honey would attract it back. Oh. Yeah. We we uh, restacked the hive. I mean, oh. we rebuilt the hive. No, no, know. it no. That's yeah. Apparently not. Whatever it was got stung. Didn't want to come back. Oh apparently well the whole I, I mean it was a huge hive and it was stunned so i don't know folks well that's the end of our session here and as always we hope you have learned something like i said you know this is this is you know going on forward um we'll be out there to see what's going on and we'll live stream as usual oh dear all these <laughs> 
Thanks for the yes. ideas on the cameras, folks. Yes, yes. Um, place. Um, if we find out that it's something that's six or seven feet tall and it is <laughs> is not human, um, we will be calling Hollywood for the movie. <laughs> I am telling you, our well, I can't bring it up here. Okay. Anyway, uh, thanks everyone for coming. Simply Seven goes live now, and as you probably have seen or maybe haven't seen, there are many channels that are live. So it's a good time to go around and, and check folks out and see what's going on. Okay. And until next week, we encourage you to be happy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bigfoot. <laughs> it's just, it's don't fun. laugh. Yeah. I told you, I don't go down there at yeah. night, but I'll go down there if something's after my beats. I'll go down there then. So, okay. Thank you, okay. everybody. Thanks for sharing. And um, we will see you next Wednesday with the next topic. Yeah. We are rolling along, okay. right? I know. Do you like, I, I, I don't, well, if you don't like it, that's what I'm doing. I mean, because yeah. I, I have to feel, we have to feel responsible. We have to be teaching you something. Okay. Everybody so, stay warm. Yes. Yeah, stay warm and think these. Okay. Thanks a lot. And we will see you next week. Okay. Bye. Good night.